bringing hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in Word with Pastor Mensa Otobiel. And now, today's word. Romans chapter 2 verse 12 to 15 says, For as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. For not all the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law, these also, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves. Who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts, accusing or else excusing them. What does that mean? That the conscience knows what is right, and our conscience accuses or excuses us. Every human being, if you go to any place, we have a certain sense of right or wrong. Somebody does something and you say, that's not fair. Who determines what is fair? There's something in us that tells us what is fair and what is not fair, what is right and what is not right. You go to every culture, the most primitive culture, there is no culture on this earth that will tell you lying is good. There's no culture. They may not be wearing clothes. They may be naked, but they know you don't have to lie. You don't have to steal. Who gave them that law? You don't have to be deceptive. You have to be selfless. You have to share what you have. Where did people get all of these things? Because something is wired inside human beings that tells us that something is right and something is wrong. And what Paul was saying in Romans is that sometimes we know that, but we suppress the truth. In other words, it takes an effort to suppress what we know is not right. It's like people saying that a man can marry a man. I mean, you have to really make an effort to come to that conclusion because everything in our life, everything evident to us tells you that is not supposed to be. You have to deliberately, intentionally rebel against self-evident truth. And the Bible says when we do that, God gives us up. Because even general revelation, without the Bible, general revelation tells us that is not the right way to behave. That is not the right way. So our conscience... We know that one of the most important things about the human life is that we must reproduce. A man and a man cannot reproduce. A woman and a woman cannot reproduce. That tells you they can't marry. They can't. It doesn't mean hate them or, or kill them or persecute them or destroy them or hurt or do something nasty to them. It doesn't mean insult them. It doesn't mean that they are not human beings. But... We don't marry for fun. You marry with the intention to produce a child. When a union potentially cannot produce a child in any form or fashion, it cannot be marriage. It cannot be married. It's self-evident truth. So the Bible says that there is general revelation. Can people rebel against general revelation? Yes. We all know we must not steal, but we steal. We all know we must not lie, but we lie. And some people make it their business to lie. Although their conscience is accusing them, they still make it their business to lie. That doesn't mean that lying is right. And even if people vote that lying is right, lying is wrong. Even if a court decides that lying is right, that court is wrong. Because lying can never be right, no matter what you vote for or no matter what you say. It is self-evident truth. It is self-evident. And the Bible says God has given us that witness in creation and in our conscience. And thirdly, general revelation 
is seen in human culture, through the human experience, through history. Almost all cultures have a history which begins with a supernatural origin. Every culture, every, every group in this world believes, some will say they came from the sun, some will say they came from the moon, some will say they came, uh, the, their ancestor was a, 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 a spirit who came and gave birth to them. But if you listen to every human story, it ends up that human beings come from a supernatural source. So if you just study human culture, it tells you wired within us is the knowledge that although we are human and physical, our origin is not human and physical. Our origin is supernatural and spiritual. It runs through every culture. This is what we call general revelation. Everybody has it. Ghanaians have it. Nigerians have it. Chinese have it. Japanese have it. British have it. Indians have it. Everywhere you go, there is general revelation by observing creation, by listening to conscience, and throughout the culture of the people, you see there is a general revelation of God. That is the first way in which God has made himself known. He has made it easy for human beings to understand him. But general revelation is not enough to know God. You can't just know God through his creation and through conscience and through culture. Because when you do that alone, then you may end up attributing things to God which are not of God. You may end up treating, doing things in your culture based on general revelation which is not right. Although it is culture and although by nature you have evolved it, it is not right. So you have to have a second kind of revelation that is more specific. Let, let me just try and explain this to you. Now, I, I, I use the iPhone, and I think it's the best phone. And, and I, I've used Apple products, Apple you know, computers, laptops, phones. If it's Apple, I take it. For a very long time, I started using Apple, I think in the late 80s or 90s, uh, before it became popular. So I'm, I'm an Apple man. So, and I've used several iPhones. So w w because I'm very familiar with app, Apple, I have a general revelation of Apple, based on my experience. So when I buy a new iPhone, although it comes from a manual, I don't read the manual. Because I believe I know enough to operate the phone. How many of you do that? Okay. How, how are you able to, if, if you are used to Nokia or Samsung or HTC phone, if you used one before, you buy a second one, you, you're not going to read the manual, although the instructor has a manual. Now you're going to use the knowledge you have to operate it. You have general revelation. So. You know, you know how to make calls and you know how to... And then one day something happens to the phone where your general revelation doesn't work. Is that not so? And wh what happens when you do that? You go to the manual for the instructor to give you special revelation beyond what you generally have. So when you go to the manual, you have far better information than what general revelation has given to you. Are you following me? So, in our knowledge of God, there is general revelation. You can use biology, science, physics, whatever, to understand God and nature and life. But there comes a point where you have to have the manufacturer's own instruction. And it happens to me all the time. Many times I buy a gadget, I'm, 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 I'm pretty much good at fixing things, as most men are. And so when I buy something and I want to fix it, although there's instruction, I just use my general knowledge. And then invariably, you get stuck somewhere. Then you go back to the manual. What does the manual say we should be doing? Then you realize, oh, you took some things for granted. 
and some things you, 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 that worked on a previous phone didn't work on this one. So you have to use special revelation. So this is the difference between general revelation and special revelation. Okay, so let's now look at special revelation. God has made himself known through general revelation, but as I said, it's not enough. He goes further and gives us special revelation. When we say something is special, we mean that it is designed for a particular purpose and that it is clearer and more definite. It is special. When, when a person says, I am special, it means I am more definite. I have a better purpose. I'm not general. I'm special, as all of you believe you are special. So, what does special revelation do? Special revelation does three things mainly, and uh, we'll explore it further. Number one, it tells us God's will, what God wants. It is through special revelation that we know God's plan for salvation for mankind. You can't get it through general revelation. General revelation gives us an idea that we are sinners. But it doesn't really tell us how to get out of sin. So if you go to any, any human culture, every human culture at its root believes that mankind has sinned. So it has sacrifices. Whether it is homo war, or it is uh, Ujura, or it is uh, any other festival in Ghana. Just go at the root of the festival, there is an assumption that we have seen and that at a certain time in life, maybe once a year, we must come and make sacrifice for our sins to be forgiven. It's there, not only in Ghana, it's everywhere. General revelation. But it doesn't tell us specifically how the sin problem must be dealt with. So we ourselves know we have sinned, and so we figure out if we have sinned, we have to appease God. If we have to appease him, we have to sprinkle this and pour libation and give him some alcohol, and maybe somehow, you know, things will work out fine for us. That's our mind. But when we go to special revelation, we know exactly what the manufacturer wants. And you'll find he doesn't really need alcohol. <laughs> You will find that. General revelation will tell you, you should pour libation with alcohol, but special revelation will tell you, no, 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 that's not what the man manufacturer is looking for. So special revelation shows us God's will, what he really wants. Secondly, special revelation will show us God's way, how he behaves. It is only through special revelation that we can make a distinction between what is of God and what is not of God. So something is happening and, 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 and it looks supernatural. How do you determine this is of God and this is not of God? If you go to a place and there is a supernatural occurrence, there is a miracle happening or something supernatural happens, how do you know which supernatural is God's supernatural and which supernatural is not God's supernatural. You can't get it by general revelation. You get it by special revelation. You have to really know what is of God and what is not of God. Otherwise, you mix everything supernatural as of God, which is what most times people do. So special revelation is going to tell, tell us God's way. Thirdly, it is going to tell us God's works, what he does. We see God's hand at work in the affairs of life. We can tell what is the work of God and what is not the work of God. So, what is the source for us of special revelation? The source of special revelation is the scriptures, the Bible. It is so critical and I'm going to talk a bit about this in the future series, but it's so important. The source of special revelation is the scriptures. It's not your opinion. It's not what your pastor thinks. It's not how you feel about it. The source of special revelation is the scriptures, just like the source of special revelation for the Apple product is the manual. 
It's what is written there. This is what it does. The source of special revelation is God's manual, the Bible. You can't get special revelation on your own. You can pray and get it. You can fast and get it. You get it from the manual. This is so important. Now, I know many times we all use the phrase, God told me, God has said. And people say, God said, God spoke to me, God, and all of that. All of that God told me, God told you, God said, God said, it's not special revelation. Most of the time, well, I'll deal with that later. <laughs> but it's not special revelation. When we say special revelation, it is the manufacturer's manual. It is that which God has revealed in written form. And somebody will say, well, how can we be sure that is it? Well, I'll deal with all of that. Uh, that, and you'll be sure. You would know. Revelation. Inspiration. Interpretation. Illumination. Application. Get a deeper understanding of God's Word with God Has Spoken, a landmark teaching by Dr. Mensah Otebil on how to relate to the Scriptures. When you study the Scripture, the most important and the most authoritative basis for interpretation is the life and words of Jesus Christ. We are Christians, not Davidians. We are not Jeremiahites. We are not Paulites. We are not Abrahamites. We are not Mosesites. We are Christians. We are named after Jesus. Get your copies of God Has Spoken by Dr. Mensah Otebil. Available in five-pack audio series. Contact Auto Bookshop Christ Temple now. 233-302-688-000 or email autobookshop at centralgospel.com. Thank you for listening to Living Word. To interact with Pastor Mensah Otebil, like his page on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Mensah Otebil. Email otebil at centralgospel.com or call plus 233-302-688-000.